back to the Davy Brown 990 restoration channel. For those of you new to the channel, my name's Barry. What are we going to do today? Right, well today we're going to install the clutch release shaft, the fork, the clutch shaft brake mechanism, its little actuator, and we're going to install and set the gap for the adjustment screws between the diaphragm, between the pressure plate and the clutch cover which gives you a clearance for the first plate to pull off before the PTO plate pulls off. So, let's crack on. Right, the parts arrived yesterday for the clutch. Um, we'll have a quick look at them and we'll also show you what the problem's been this week with the clutch. Hopefully, help you not fall into the same pit. If you're needing to replace parts of your drive system from your engine to your gearbox. So we'll show you this. Right, what we've got here is the old input shaft and support snout. This was the replacement shaft and support snout. We've got this. Colin sent this down to us because it's got the brake drum on. The old one hasn't, and nor has it got a facility, hasn't got the undercuts in here to put the brake drum on. Now, when I bought the tractor, my original input shaft and the muff coupling, you can see here, it's got a turn section, and you can actually see on that, there's a witness mark on there where the friction pad's been rubbing. And... Colin must have picked up on this because he sent us this down with the gearbox, the replacement gearbox, and it's got the brake drum on. This hasn't got the undercuts in to put the snap rings in to hold the drum in the correct position. Right. So when we started the rebuild, what we did was we used the shaft, the drive shaft, that Colin had sent us down. I used the whole thing never thinking for one minute that there might be a difference in the support snouts. So it just shows you, always check your components. Again, this is another one why you do not throw anything away till you're finished. Right, so let's have a look at this. So we have here the two support snouts. You can quite clearly see there is a quite a bit of difference in the length of those support snouts. Also, in this support snout, down in the bottom here, here, there's a drain hole which comes out here. So if this bearing fills up with oil that could be travelling along the shaft, it drains out the front end here but it drains into the clutch housing part of the gear casting it doesn't drain backwards my original doesn't have any drains in that whatsoever now then what was happening the problem we were having was as the throwout bearing was travelling back and forward along the the snout it was getting to up to the end here and just touching the release plate and then it was literally falling off and jamming so I was investigating was the clutch set up properly hence we then started to loosen off the adjustment, the PTO plate adjustment, with this screw, and the screw was sheared. Now, I didn't shear that because I know I know I didn't shear that because you know fine well the amount of force you put on a screw when it shears. So you know fine well whether you've sheared a bolt or not. And I didn't shear that. That was already sheared. Um, but this piece, this piece must have been in with at least a couple one one and a half two threads if that because the original the original lock 
bolt, this is not the original, the original lock bolt, and the screw was still in place. So I put an Allen key in the back, undid it, and it came apart. Being hardened, had to get ground out. So, had a word with Colin, asked him if he had a redundant pressure plate up there that was of no use to anyone and were these adjustment screws still with it and that's where they came from we also got from Colin these two spring steel wear clips now these clips go on to the thrust bearing or the release bearing the clip onto here They do seriously they do we'll put them on in a minute they clip onto there where the bearings two ticks where these two little bearings off the fork run on so there run on those spring steel clips on the back of the bearing, like that, such as that. The two shims are for the back of the muff shaft, between the muff shaft and the gearbox, to correctly position this. I would imagine it's for this, as there's a pin there. When it's in position, you pop a pin into there and it stops it sliding back and forward. Right. So that's all the parts now. <clears throat> I've tried this in position. It works beautifully because this, the, the extra bit here, actually fits into the release plate on the clutch. So there's plenty of travel here now for that. So we're going to use this input shaft with that snout, the muff coupling, and the thrust bearing and the bits to put this together so so that's what we're going to do let's get organized we'll get the clutch sorted out for the final time we'll get these pieces assembled and put in and then we'll get the pressure plates released so that the friction plates can centralize themselves under their own weight um, and they're not sitting there under pressure from possibly being misaligned slightly when it was put together. Let's get on with it. Right, first thing we're going to put in. I haven't painted this. I'll, I'll catch up with the painting later. Just, I'm going to put the actuator in for the clutch brake shaft. There's no ring here. Fits in the hole in the side. A little bit of grease and the hole in the side pops through here. Now put a bit of grease on the shaft. This is just EP2. Okay, so pop my o ring into the recess on the outside. Pop our actuator in. Wait a minute. Right, so we're going to have to put the o ring onto there. And then we're going to fit the whole lot into the hole. As such. Give our hands a quick wipe. We've got my circlip here and my circlip pliers. Let's have a look. 
Make sure the clip is in. There we go. Clip in, actuator on. Just going to put, just going to smear a bit of that grease onto those faces. Not going to do any harm in here, is it? This is going to fill up oil before long. Okay, actuator back in. My block fits onto that. It operates the uh, the clutch brake shaft. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put the actuator shaft in, I'm going to put the fork on, and we've got two keyways here, two keys that need to go into the keyways here. So we're going to start by a little bit of grease. I'm going to put some grease in the receiver at that end. For the shaft. So as it goes through, it'll grease the end of the shaft as it goes in. Don't want a lot of, there's enough oil already on the shaft to, uh, right, take a bit of resume cloth, a bit of paper. Okay, so right now, right now, I'm going to put the shaft in. I haven't greased this end yet because I don't want a lot of grease getting out of the shaft. Okay, so I'm going to take my forks, I'm going to slide my forks on. Bear in mind we've got a key way to find here, there we go. Take a key, pop a key in. Just entered the receiver at that side as well. I want to get the other key. Pop the key into here. These keys are for more for timing registration than load bearing. The load bearing is carried out by the clamp action in the fork. So now we're going to get a bit of grease. I'm going to put a bit of grease on the outside of this shaft here so it lubes as it goes in. This will end up probably spread all over the place. You don't want excessive grease on here. This is just enough grease to make your life easy as you're assembling it. Both those keys are captive now, so I'll just... Oh, they're not captive, but that's all I want to worry about here. Right, we'll grab a quick nylon hammer. The cutout in the shaft here, you want that to line up with the cutout and the fork. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now, we'll roll that back so we can get in there with our spanner. 916 spanner here. Tighten this clamp up. Then we'll put the 
snout back in and the bearing. just rocking nicely there and that will float back and forward so that will just pop those into the recesses okay where's my snout pop my snout in with my release bearing on like such Now I'm not going to attempt to release the plates at the minute because they'll drop. We need to put the shafts in to release the plates. We'll just need to make sure everything's good with that. Okay. So, before we put the snout in the home, we've got for here a nice new O-ring. New Sealy O ring. We'll pop that in position. Nice and soft. I bought some um, 332. Bit of grease on. Bought some 332 for this. I was going to make an O ring, but then I had to order some parts from the supplier, and the supplier had these O rings in. For about, I think it was three or four quid. And I thought, for three or four quid, I'll just buy one. It's easier. Plenty of grease on it. Now, Kiwi. Let's not forget the Kiwi. We will put the tiniest sliver of grease in there to keep a hold of that. Pop that on there. Now again, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of grease on here because this runs dry but I don't want it caked up with the debris. There we go. So, we'll pop that. Give my hands a wipe. I'll tidy that off there. I don't want to be up to the eyes, do I? I want to be a bit civilized about it. Okay, so clutch brake. Put a little actuating block on. Line that up down there. all up started long one now just this might take a little bit of fiddling there we go to find the hole because you have to move the actuating block up and down as well with it Little one. Okay. Oh, that's that hasn't started, has it? That one has.
let's see this band is going to come back off because it needs to go away it has to have some material some friction material put onto it in order to grip the, bra the little brake drum on the input shaft name for the moment not doing anything tight have a look okay now next job There's a brand new bear to go in here, I've told you that. There's a brand new bear to go in here. But I'm not putting it in at the minute. Put that in, because I can put it in while it's in there. Then that goes in there. Right. And I would imagine with the brake friction material in there, that would literally just release enough what you set it up you're going to adjust the the movement in here by the screw inside this big spring okay so that is clutch shaft break in I'll just get that a bit of, bit of tension Might have to. Right. Let's see, I haven't put the springs back on here yet because I have a feeling this will be coming out in order if the gearbox doesn't go in with the muff shaft on. Never mind. Okay. So that's fitting the PTO brake band. Right, my well, next little job put in and set what well, gaps in here for the PTO release. So a replacement screw from Colin goes in. The gap we're going to set in here is 70 thou between the pressure plate there and the tip of that screw. So we're going to put 70 thou in there, set it there and just nip it. Go in there with feel like gauges. I'm gonna screw this in. Just feel it there. And just nip that. Just just nip it. Then you can see the end of the screw down in there. Okay, number one in. Let's turn the clutch. Go to number two. Right. Number two. Just start that if you look. Can you see down there? So we're going to put our feeler gauges in between the end of the screw and the pressure plate. 
course we'll back the lock nut off sufficiently and then it's just touch in there do that up right just nipped number three that into the hole. Just see the ends just popped out there. There we go. Do a little lock lock la, 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 la. do our little lock nut up and check for clearances. Lovely. Happy with that. Happy with that. Again, just lightly nip them. Right. Now, check again. Yes, we've moved it. Nope, happy with that. That one's moved. And our final one. Yep, happy with that. Right, jobs are good. Happy with all that. Right, well that's it for this video then, isn't it? Um, so we'll set our gaps, we've got our clutch release fork in, um, we've got a P, we've got a clutch shaft break in. As I say, the band has to come off. That needs to go away to get some friction material put onto it. But uh, we're, we're creeping forward slowly. Uh, a big, a big thanks to Colin Stewart up in Aberdeenshire who sent down the parts because there's me broken bits. Um, I did have. Some broken bits didn't I? The one of the adjustment one of the adjustment screws broke and had to be ground out. Um, so get in touch with Colin. Asked him if he had a, a redundant useless clutch cover because let's face it you're not going to take the bits um, a saleable clutch cover just to, to sell one little adjustment bolt are you? So I asked him specifically if he had a one that was redundant, useless, um, seen better days. Um, could I buy the adjustment screws off him and got them. Also, the two little spring steel wear plates for the back of the thrust bearing carrier lugs, where the little roller bearings, the SCE30s, rub up against. So... SCE 34s, not 30s, SCE 34s. They rub up against these spring steel plates and not on the castings. 
um, which is why I had to repair my castings, because somebody didn't put the steel plates on, did they? Right, well, as I say, thank you very much for visiting us. Sam. hope this video has been useful. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe. It, is, it will help our channel tremendously. Cost you guys nothing to subscribe. You just get a notification. If you tick the little box for all notifications, you will get a notification when the next video is out from us. Uh, see if you're going looking for it. Eh? But remember, at the end of the day, don't overthink it. It's just nuts and bolts. See you guys in the next one. Take care now.